Hello everyone, this is Varun and this is a learn to play video brought to you by the boardroom. Today we are going to learn how to play Railroad Inc. by Halmar Haak and Lorenzo Silva for CMON Games. Railroad Inc. belongs to a class of games called Roll and Writes, so called because the main action of the game involves rolling dice and then using the die results to fill, write, or draw into spaces on a player sheet. In Railroad Inc., our player sheet is a 7x7 square grid. As you can see, on each side of the grid, there are exits on the 2nd, 4th, and 6th squares for a total of 12 exits. The overall objective of the game is to connect as many of the different exits as possible. There are two types of paths you will use in the game, railroad tracks and highway. You will note that the 12 exits are also marked as either railroad or highway. Let us now look at the four dice we will use in the base version of the game. We have four six-sided dice, three of which are identical. These identical dice have six unique faces that provide different arrangements of paths. The six possible faces are shown here at the top of your player sheet. There is a turn, a T-junction, and a straight in each of railroad and highway. The fourth die consists of three path arrangements, each of which occurs on two faces. These faces offer different ways in which the railroad and highway can interact. You can have a turning junction, a straight junction, and an overpass. The junctions are the only ways in which highway paths and railroad paths can meet. The overpass allows them to cross each other without meeting. The game is played over seven rounds. On each round, one of the players must roll all four dice. Each player must now use all four available die faces by drawing them into four empty spaces. Each new path segment must be connected to an exit. Players may rotate or reverse the die faces. Once done, players should mark the round number in the top right of each of the used spaces. In addition to the die faces, there are six special faces available to players. These are displayed at the top of the player sheet. Each round, you may choose to use one of these special faces in addition to the four die faces. Once a face is used, it may not be used again in subsequent rounds. Over the course of the game, a total of three special faces may be used. Once a round has ended, players may not make any changes to spaces filled during that round. Each round is played in the exact same way, with four dice being rolled and players using the dice, as well as optional special faces, to fill in empty spaces. The game ends at the end of the seventh round, at which point players will have filled between 28 and 31 spaces out of the 49 available on the sheet. Let us now look at how points are scored. There are five components to scoring in the base game, and the handy scoring guide on the player sheet will help you keep track of them. The first component is any points you score from your exit networks. This can be calculated by a simple process. Start with any exit that you have used, and count the number of exits that are accessible from the one where you start. Adding one for the exit you started from, this is the size of that network of exits. Repeat this process with any exits you have used which were not connected to a previously counted network. The points table on the player sheet tells you how many points you will score for each network. The sum of the points for all of your networks can be written into the first box on the scoring guide. The next component assigns points for the longest stretch of connected highway on your player sheet. To get this value, count the number of squares traversed by the longest stretch of highway you have constructed. Any junctions that connect to highway on both sides do not interrupt your count. This provides you your longest highway score, and you can enter this into the next box on the scoring guide. Repeat this process with railroads for your longest railroad score, and enter that into the third box in the scoring guide. You also receive one point for each space in the central 3x3 three three square that you have used. This square is marked by a red outline on the player sheet for easy reference. This score goes into the fourth box on the score guide. The last component in the score guide are the negative points you get from errors in your construction. Each unconnected path, or erroneously, that is, railroad to highway without a junction, connected path, incurs a one-point penalty. Add up all such errors and record that into the fifth box of the score guide. Now sum the first four boxes and subtract the fifth box value to get your final score. The highest scoring player wins the game. Thank you for watching this video. Give the game a go and let us know how you feel. Thank you.